Good morning, everybody. The second day of the Qt 3D talk starts now. I see some familiar faces in here, so at least some people seem to have liked it yesterday. And we're continuing with the talk Vulcan and Friends, so probably something about geology. Um, <laughs> this talk will be held by the Qt company's Laszlo Agoc. Please join me in welcoming Laszlo and enjoy the talk. <laughs> Yep, thank you. Sound is working, cool. So, yeah, some of you might have seen, you know, the talks yesterday in the same room. I was talking about, you know, Q3D Studio, Q3D. And, uh, yeah, today, well, I'm back with another talk. And now we are going to look into, well, a different layer of the Qt graphic stack. Uh, I'm Laszlo Agoc, so I work in the graphics and multimedia team in, uh, at the Qt company in Oslo, Norway. So in the past, I've been involved in quite a lot of OpenGL-related work in all sorts of all areas of Qt. And uh, now, you know, it's time to look at some other graphics APIs. Because as you know, recently we got Vulkan, Metal, Direct3D12, so yeah, lots of interesting new things uh, have been popping up during the, I don't know, past two years. Uh, so what we are going to focus now, focus on now is the level of Vulkan support in Qt 5.10. So probably most of you uh, were at Lars's keynote. And, you know, he, he actually mentioned a, a few things related to this. So, you know, he was talking about that we have QVulcan instance, QVulcan window in Qt 5.10. And yes, that's exactly in the focus here. So before uh, going into the details, of course, I have three well, kind of obvious questions. So first of all, who knows what Vulcan is? And it's not the geologic. Uh, you know, that thing, it's a graphics thing. Okay, that's fine. But who actually used Vulkan? Yeah, that's a number of hands is a bit s smaller now. And finally, of course, who likes Vulkan? Um, is, well, yeah, still some hands, they seem a bit unsure. Okay, that was a, not really serious. Uh, yeah. So, what do we have? So, Vulkan is a, you know, a, a new generational graphics and compute API. So, the easiest way, so, you know, if you really have no idea what this is, of course, you know, Kronos, the Kronos group, who is behind this specification, you know, kronos.org slash Vulkan, I think that's the official starting page. So, you know, lots of information can be uh, 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 retrieved from there. Now, uh, this is a kind of cross-platform API, so unlike, for example, Metal, which is an, you know, Apple-specific thing available on Apple's platforms, or Direct3D, which is obviously kind of tied to Windows. So this, you know, not unlike OpenGL, aims to be available on a widest possible set of platforms, you know, and yeah, for us, of course, the most interesting ones right now are obviously Windows, Linux, Android. Of course, it has to be said that there's a bit of a, it's a bit of a step back in some ways, because if you compare what platforms OpenGL is available on, well, you know, the, the set is a bit smaller in case of Vulkan. Now, another thing uh, that uh, the scope of the API is interesting, because now we have also have the windowing system interfacings. That's what WSI is. And, you know, if you are familiar with how things go with OpenGL, then, you know, you might know that there we use a separate API, be it EGL, GLX, WGL, depending on the platform, to manage contexts, which are, you know, encapsulate the, you know, the, act the OpenGL state, and also to manage things like window surfaces, so to somehow connect the rendering so that you want to see something shown in the, in the native window provided by the, by the OS or windowing system. 
So in case of Vulkan, it's, it's only interesting because this is kind of part of the specification in, in form of extensions, but still it's there. So when I say Vulkan, Vulkan supporting Qt, that's internally, I mean, that's not just about really the actual rendering, that how do you draw something, but also how do you, you know, set up the, the, the rendering pipeline. So, you know, we have to manage swap chains, which is a collection of buffers, uh, uh, you know, through which you actually display something in a window. Uh, yeah. Well, well, we'll see how, and of course this can be a bit complicated, but we'll see how, you know, Qt can potentially help you with this. So, the main message, which you probably all know, is that Qt 5.10 introduces basic Vulkan support. The wording can be a bit interesting because we like to talk about basic Vulkan support or basic Vulkan enablers. What we don't like to say is that Qt 5.10 introduces Vulkan support, period. Because, as you know, Qt has a lot of different you know, UI technologies, so you know, widgets, Qt Quick, Qt 3D, Qt 3D Studio, and uh, obviously OpenGL is today used in many of, well, all of these, and uh, right now, of course, we are talking about, uh, you know, the first steps, so adding basic support, but this won't mean that you can actually use uh, Qt Quick on top of Vulkan, at least not directly. Well, there are actual ways, we'll see that later. But of course, the Qt 3D renderer is, you know, not Vulkan-based in, in, in 5.10. Of course, these things may come eventually, later on. But for now, what we are really uh, focusing on is that, you know, getting the basic things right, so that you can have a queue window, and then get it, and you can have, you know, Vulkan content in there. So those of you who are familiar with some other, you know, frameworks like GLFW or SDL, which is, you know, may maybe if you're into games, that's, uh, you know, maybe, you're, maybe then you are more familiar with that. So, what we have now is basically similar to that. So, you know, these also allow you to, you know, create a window and then, you know, provides you the basic infrastructure to, you know, do something with Vulkan. But then the rest is up to you, like, you know, what you render, or how you render. Of course, in Qt, the exciting use case is that. So, when Q widgets are involved, since, you know, Qt provides you the nice set of widgets, Q push button and so on. And as usual, of, of course, you will be able to embed your Vulkan based Q windows into a widget based UI using Q window container. And uh, this is where things get, of course, exciting since, uh, you know, many of the users use Qt for, in a on the desktop for, you know, tooling type of apps. So think of you know, you saw some examples yesterday, like editors for game engines or any sort of, you know, visualization type of apps, which of course have been traditionally and still are based on widgets. And then in Qt 4 times, they used QGL widget. In Qt 5 times, well, they may use QOpenGL window or QWindow. And the nice thing is that now we can enable those apps to do the same, but with Vulkan based rendering. Well, if they, if they are interested in that which is, I think, really good news. And finally, of course, this is also, you know, lays the foundations for the future. So, for example, we know that the Qt 3D guys have already been experimenting with a, you know, Vulkan renderer, which, of course, uses the same infrastructure. So it uses QVulkan instance, so it uses the enablers introduced in Qt 5.10. Uh, in case you are interested in the details of the platforms, because when I say Linux, that's not necessarily obvious what I mean, so we know which windowing systems. We have multiple platform plugins for Linux. So here's a more detailed overview. So when I say Windows, of course, I mean the normal Windows desktop, so, you know, or the modern UWP and so on, that's not in scope here. When we say Linux, Oh, and I must say that, of course, right now, Windows is probably the best tested thing. So, of course, we have run our, you know, code and examples on NVIDIA, AMD, Intel cards. And, yeah, that should be pretty problem-free. When it comes to Linux, currently, the platform plugin that has Vulkan support is the one, is XCB. 
which is used when you know you are running with X, with X11 windowing system. This is interesting because only because Wayland, which is another commonly used platform plugin in that context, I think that lacks this at the moment, so that will come uh, you know in future versions. So here, uh, you know, I got some good results. For example, I've been running things on a NVIDIA Jetson TX1, so you know, Linux-based board, and yeah, things were working pretty pretty nicely. In other cases, your the results may, you know, you know, depend. So when I was also running things on an Intel NUC, Broadwell-based, some you know recent Mesa version, Fedora 26. Some things were working, some things were not that stable, so, you know, your experiences will be really <laughs> may vary quite a lot. Android, on the other hand, tends to work very well. So, um, starting with API level 24, so if you have an NDK installed, which has, you know, API level 24 or higher, then that's perfect, since that has Vulkan headers, so, you know, Vulkan is there, usable. Well, uh, in some cases, of course, you can put together, so, you know, an NDK that supports this for earlier versions, like we did this for the NVIDIA Shield tablet, that's Android 6, API 23. Well, it's, it was doable. And in the end, of course, apps worked fine. And also, you know, we, we use devices like the NVIDIA Shield TV, Android 7, so, yeah, things worked like a charm when it comes to Vulkan. And uh, I mentioned Vulkan headers. This is relevant because if you are building from source, then what you must ensure is that the Vulkan headers are available in the build environment because that's when, you know, Vulkan support gets enabled. You know, there's a check at, co at configure time when you run configure. So, yeah. So for, as, uh, when it comes to libraries, as we will see later, that doesn't really matter since everything happens at runtime, but the headers have to be there. And uh, if, in case you are wondering about the implications that, oh, I have a Vulkan-capable build of Qt, does it mean that that Qt build cannot be deployed on a system that doesn't have Vulkan? So that should not be an issue since, like I said, we only we load stuff at runtime, so there's no you know direct dependency, so any you know Vulkan related DLS or whatnot. So you can still you know ship your Qt build, for example, on Windows and so on and so on. So that that won't be an issue. When it comes to the pre-built packages, so you know these official builds we are shipping, so that's work in progress at the moment. And that's probably true for the 510 beta already. So the MSVC, so the Visual Studio packages, at least the 2015 ones for sure, have are Vulkan enabled. When it comes to the Linux builds, no, that's not in place. So you know that's being solved, you know, just ju just as we speak. So yeah. I can't give you an exact answer that which packages will have Vulkan support, but some will have it for sure. <laughs> So, let's look at some actual apps. So, I'm gonna use this Windows PC here, and uh, it might not be very obvious, but that screenshot is, or that photo is from an Android tablet, so that's an NVIDIA Shield. You know, just running one of our examples, which again shows the uh, typical digits, and then there is a Vulkan-based Q window on the left. So, yeah, that's Android. When it comes to Windows, let's just try to run something. We'll, we will actually have a little bit more dive into the code later. Oh, yeah, something is starting up. So this is our Hello Vulkan widget example, which features an LCD widget for, well, just for fun. But, uh, <laughs> yes, and a uh, very familiar triangle if you have seen our OpenGL examples. Well, this does more or less the same, but under the hood it's all Vulkan. So, yeah, I'm running on my NVIDIA GPU here, and, well, yeah, it's, it's working out pretty fine. Cool.
Now, uh, one question you may ask is that, you know, why, are we why is this really needed? Why are we talking about this? Because, uh, you know, Qt, of course, offers you usually on pretty much any platform. You can get hold of the native window handle, so, you know, that HVND on Windows or, you know, whatever else it is. So, of course, if you just want to get, you know, your own rendering into a, like, Q window, that's, of course, usually possible with any graphics APIs without any support from Qt. And if you remember, like, in January last year, you know, even I blogged about this, because with D3D12, when, when we did the first experiments, what we did was completely done in the application scope, so there were no changes in Qt. We simply, you know, got the native window and then did stuff. So yes, and that's why, for example, even before Qt 5.10, it is possible to use Vulkan with Qt. And, you know, you, there are multiple projects on GitHub that do this. But there are actually some benefits in having proper, you know, support integrated in Qt. And Vulkan is especially interesting here because that is cross-platform, unlike, say, D3D. So the API actually does have some you know, in a way, not very nice, but from specific bits in it, like when it comes to the windowing systems. And uh, this is actually something Qt can very nicely abstract. So if you look at code like that, so that comes from, I don't know, one of the examples that come with the Vulkan SDK. So, you know, cross-platform apps done directly with Vulkan are, you know, not unlikely that they will start doing something like that. That obviously there will be a defined that chooses the platform that what you are compiling for. But then, of course, when it comes to the, you know, creating a surface for a native window, you know, then native things are involved. Then, you know, there's a bunch of if devs and the things are not very nice. So the nice thing is that with Qt, we can do something much nicer because all of that can be replaced with something like that because, you know, now Qt provides the things under the hood. So things will get routed to the platform plugin that does whatever else is needed. So, you know, applications can stay completely, you know, plain and simple. There's a Q window, get a surface. Well, yeah, it gives you a VK surface, KH, KHR, and, you know, everyone is happy your app is, you know, reusable, will work just fine on, a, on another platform. Furthermore, of course, there's a, some convenience here. So QVulkan instance provides you things like, yes, it will dynamically load a, a Vulkan implementation. So, you know, we avoid potential portability issues with directly linking to a Vulkan library. Because, well, if you read the specification, it's uh, not necessarily straightforward to do a properly pro portable app. For example, there's nothing saying that the core Vulkan functions like VK, whatever, is actually callable, is actually exposed as uh, normal functions. It only says that, yes, get instance procoder is available and you can resolve the rest. But anything else is not guaranteed. So, yes, for example, we, we provide convenience for accessing the core API, Vulkan 1.0. Then, when it comes to discovering, enabling what layers and extensions are available, you know, it might be easier to do it via the familiar Vulkan types, Q, no, Q types like QString, QString list, and so on. It just makes life easier. Then, things like you will probably want to play or enable the Vulkan validation layers, which then, you know, give you nice and helpful warnings when you are doing something, well, potentially incorrect with the API. And, you know, wouldn't it be nice if those would get routed to QDebug by default in QTAPs? Of course, this is optional. So, yeah, there are things we can offer and things we do offer in 5.10. And additionally, the, well, really uh, a much bigger thing is that we can, we can and also do offer a convenience QVulkan window, which is a QWindow subclass, just like QOpenGL window is a QWindow subclass, which is aimed at, you know, those of you who just who want to get started quickly and, you know, don't necessarily want to, you know, say, fight swap chains in the beginning. 
So what this gives you is, you know, it manages a swap chain for you, handles things like, you know, window resizes, whatnot, in a proper way, and it gives you the typical, well, typical in cute, cute sense uh, setup where you have double buffering and, you know, your rendering thread will be throttled to vSync, so the vertical sync, like to 60 hertz or something. So it gives you this out of the box. Of course, those who are not really into this can, of course, use QWindow directly and, you know, you can set up your own swap chain and so on, on your own. QVulkan instance is, you know, one of the main classes here. And if you are interested in, you know, developing, so if you want to look into, you know, change or enhance things in Qt itself, then it will be important to know that this is also the class that is backed by a Q platform something, so there's a Q-platform Vulkan instance, and then that is the thing which then has, you know, implementations in the various platform plugins. The role of Q-Vulkan instance is, is simple, so it basically, well, represents a Vulkan instance, so that's the concept in Vulkan. Well, in short, that's basically it encapsulates the, the global state, so Vulkan doesn't really have the concept of context, like as we had with OpenGL which is nice in many ways, but there is this thing, the Vulkan instance, so in typical applications you will have one, and yeah, that's it. Now, uh, the second point there points out some interesting things that, uh, of course, by default, this will create a, well, VK instance for you, but learning from, well, let's say, past mistakes, we are trying to do things a bit better right from the start. For example, if you remember QOpenGL context in, say, Qt 5.0, well, that created an OpenGL context, but then there was no way to actually make it wrap or adopt an existing context, which might be, might be coming from an external engine, so, you know, an, another renderer. And uh, eventually this, this got added, Qt 5.4, 5.5, around that time. And uh, the good thing here is that QVulkan instance supports this from day one, so of course nothing forces you to really, you know, go through Qt. You, you can get a VK instance from wherever and whatever way you want, and then you can get QVulkan instance to rub that, just adopt that handle as is. Uh, yeah, we, there are some functions in there related, you know, the querying or, or telling that these are the extensions I want to be enabled. Uh, yes. And finally, like I talked about this, the, we expose the core Vulkan 10 API via QVulkan functions and QVulkan device functions. Of course, before any of you start shouting, that's completely optional. Just like with QOpenGL functions, well, of course, it has benefits, it's convenient, but if you really want to use something else, or you want to use, for example, say there are C++ bindings for Vulkan, or you want to use some other uh, function, uh, Wrangler, well, that, that's doable too. However, of course, in, Vul in Qt, in Qt's own examples, of course, we prefer to use these because it's nice and it's portable, and it really does what the spec says it should do. When it comes to documentation, the good news is that these things are quite heavily documented, so already now you can browse uh, the snapshots, or of course it's probably included in the beta. So you know, QVulkan instance, QVulkan window, don't, you don't read this, I'm just stepping through it. It has some, you know, details, some code examples, mm, yeah, quite a lot of things, and of course the API is described nicely. So. Yeah, if you want details, simply go there. Two, what about the window? Because now we have an instance, but that has still nothing to do with, you know, QWindow. So for QWindow, we introduced two things in 5.10. So there's a Vulkan surface type in QSurface, so that in addition to raster surface, OpenGI surface, now you can say, oh, this QWindow is meant to be used with Vulkan. So, you know, set the surface type to Vulkan surface. In addition, you will have to associate Vulkan-based QWindows with a QVulkan instance. And yeah, there's a function for that. 
uh, when it comes to working directly with QWindow, which is, you know, not using QVulcan window, uh, there are some, you know, typical pitfalls. When it, you know, how do you handle resizes? You, you need to, you know, understand a bit how Expose event works. Or there can be some interesting issues, for example, when tearing down things that, oh, I need to destroy my swap chain without, before the surface and so on. So the good thing is that I think most of these things are documented, and we also had a blog post series recently. So, yeah, if you really want to dive in, then just, you know, a reminder that you might want to check out this first. When it comes to QVulcan window, this is the optional convenience thing. And uh, it, you know, the goal is to provide a QOpenGL window, or uh, you could say QOpenGL Q widget-like experience. When it comes to the API, it's a bit different in the sense that it's modeled after a QQuick frame buffer object, if you are familiar with that. But in the end, it should still be fairly simple. And, like I said, there are things in there, like, you know, multi-sampling support or supporting simple grabbing like you want to get a queue image from the content of course it's inefficient but you know sometimes you just want that for testing or whatever or you want to save a screenshot uh, so it has support for these or of course it tries to handle some special cases better you know device loss and whatnot at least tries to handle them a bit bit more gracefully of course if you do your own queue window then well of course you need to handle these things yourself And, okay, that, that's actually the end of the things we do in Qt 5.10. However, there are two important topics, which one of them you will surely ask when you try to do anything with Vulkan in, in Qt, is that, okay, so what do I do with my shaders? Because, you know, you will, of course, have vertex shaders, fragment shaders, and so on, and you know that, of course, you will have to use the Vulkan flavor, so things are slightly bit different there, you know, no uniforms, no nothing. Like you have to use uniform blocks instead. But the interesting part, and of course this will have an effect later also on Qt, once we try to use Vulkan in frameworks, you know, Quick, Qt 3D and so on. So the interesting thing is that there is no mandated runtime shader compilation which means that by with OpenGL you could do GL compile shader and you pass in, you know, GLSL source strings and, you know, it, that's fine. There's a shader compiler, you know, mandatory, built into the drivers, so there's nothing like that here. The only thing the spec mandates is support for SpearV, which is an intermediate language. So from the app's point of view, well, it's more like a binary blob. And it's up to you how you compile your code, either GLSL, actually, sooner or later, it will be possible to also use other languages like HLSL to compile those to SpearV. But you know how, how you get there. So for now, if you inspect any of the examples that ship with Qt, you will find these .spv files. So we have, you know, .var, .frag, the actual sources, but that's not what these applications use. They use the, you know, the, 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 the SpearV files. So we just simply ship the pre precompiled pre versions. In more complex projects, this is of course highly unlikely to be suitable, so you can't just manually invoke a compiler and then you know, repeat infinitely. Of course, you, you may want to integrate this thing better with the build system, or you might want to you know, support runtime compilation by you know, simply building in GL slang. That's a, a you know, GLSR to SpearV compiler, which, you know, is freely available. Uh, another thing is reflection, which is also not really available. So say you want to discover what are the uniform blocks and what are the members in those uniform blocks in the shader. Think of how, for example, shader effect works in Qt Quick, or how Qt 3D works that you know, there, there is some shader, and you need to dynamically discover the, the, the inputs, what are the inputs, what does the shader expect? And 
Well, here it's, it's, there's no API, and you might not have shader source, so you can't just parse since you have SpearV. So, of course, you need to figure this out probably from the, you know, compile from, from SpearV. So, what do you do there? Like I said, this is really not Qt 510 material, but there are things available here and there. So, for example, well, we, we did run that this was actually a hackathon project. So, from time to time, in the Qt company, we have these hackathons, which was originally like a 24 hour long thing. These days, it's a bit more family friendly, so it's typically spread through two, spread through two normal days instead. So, for example, recently at one of these events, there was this prototype created available at GitHub, which actually shows you, you know, it gives you pro project files to, you know, compile in GR slang, and also Spear v Cross, which is another project available on GitHub, which actually helps you to, to do the reflection. Well, it has some other interesting features as well. So, that's just an option that if you are interested in these things, you know, check that out. Uh, and what's in there? It's uh, really, you know, we integrate GR slang, so we give you a simple cutish, cute class to, you know, do the compilation. No. Then there is some, you know, I think quite nice things to, 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 to represent the reflection data. So, you know, list of uniform blocks and so on, members of those in a proper cute, cute style. And then you can serialize that using the JSON facilities of Qt Core. And finally, there is, a, there is also an experiment there, which, well, I talked a bit about at the uh, Contributors Day. So the idea there is that, you know, that's an experiment to uh, maybe try standardizing on a single language and then compile to SpearV and then generate whatever, you know, target uh, shader is needed at, then at runtime, so this might be something suitable for GLES2, GLES3, then something suitable for OpenGL core profiles, maybe HLSL, and so on, MSL for Metal. Yeah, so this is something that's provided by Spear v Cross, so we played a bit with it. So, yeah, maybe might be interesting also to some of you. The other thing which I want to mention, which is really, now. Yeah, it's, it's, we don't really have anything for it today, but it's gonna come, is the interoperability, so that's often shortened to interop, between the APIs. Because the thinking that, oh, I have, you know, a Vulkan engine, which from somewhere, and, you know, maybe I want to combine this with a cute quick based UI. So, of course, the common thinking is that, uh, well, that means that, QtQuick has to render also through Vulkan. So that's not strictly required. So um, right now, we already have some interesting experiments. So for example, I did some time ago this thing here, where, oh, how, how do I get QtQuick into my QVulkan window? So this is a bit, in a way, an awful hack. So we use the software renderer to you know, basically get Q images from the Qtwick content and then just use that upload to textures. This is not exactly efficient, and of course it means that Qtwick is not accelerated, but for some case use cases, this is actually good enough. But the thing is that in the future, we can probably do better than this, so to, you know, get proper acceleration. Because uh, now that, you know, extensions like the, the external memory for Vulkan and the memory objects, uh, so the, now that these extensions, extensions are, are there and are actually starting to become available in drivers, at least on, on desktop. So this is uh, something that's very promising also for Qt, because this might be an alternative in the future that maybe we can, you know, keep, say, some, some of our frameworks, like an OpenGL, while at the same time still allowing, you know, importing or combining it with Vulkan or, well, maybe even direct 3D content, you know, simply using these new extensions to, you know, import memory, which is, you know, like a Vulkan image backed by some memory. I may want to export that and then import, well, into GL, and then I get an OpenGL texture and 
hopefully that's efficient enough. So, you know, no conversions, no readbacks, no nothing. So if this starts to work well, that will actually be very good news for Qt, well, and of course Qt applications, since the ways we can combine content from these different APIs will, you know, ra radically improve or, well, explode, basically. So now, a very quick look at the structure of, 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 some, of all, some of the examples we ship with Qt. So, the more complex case, well, this is actually not something we ship with Qt because that's just a manual test, but just to give you an idea that, you know, an application like this, which, well, clears things to green, and this only uses QWindow. So, uh, to create an application like this, it's, it's not very complicated, but, you know, it needs quite a lot of things, because, you know, I have a QWindow subclass, and then I handle things like expo expose event, resize event, a few other events. Then there's lots of Vulkan stuff, as you can see, you know, I need to take care of all the swap chain stuff myself and so on and so on. We start rendering when things are exposed, resize some special events to make things work nice. And, you know, then setting up Vulkan devices, we need to discover physical devices, devices, queues, and so on, swap chain. So it can get fairly long. I think it's like 700 lines altogether. But, of course, even though it does, this might seem intimidating at first, it's becomes, well, quite natural later on. What's more interesting is that, uh, you know, or other examples, you know, which, for example, which, which use QVulcan window, so those are a lot easier than getting started. So, for example, hello Vulcan texture, which I'm gonna run here, is, well, yeah, that's like a textured quad, right? So probably two triangles or maybe a triangle strip, and, oh, it rotates, well, cool. And oh, it supports resizing and things like that. So this is more like what you know we'll probably see a lot in applications too. So in main, this is what I said. There will be, you know, we just simply create a QWorkon instance on the stack after QGUI application. When it comes to getting, you know, interest or some help for debugging, you can actually take note of this Q.Vulkan. Uh, login category, which you can enable to get some more output from, you know, QVulcan instance, QVulcan window. Then here's an example of how do I request some layers. So for example, here I'm enabling validation, so the Vulcan validation layers. Well, the Android specific part that comes directly from, you know, Android says that that's how you do this. So yeah, that comes from the Android developer pages. Uh, yes, then we create our instance. The patterns, so the API patterns, should be familiar from, from QOpenGL context and friends. So, you know, there's a create function and so on. So, there's uh, no surprises there. So, it follows the same patterns. Then, Vulkan. So, yeah, we will have a QVulkan window subclass, which is associated with the uh, w w instance. So, that's a new QWindow function added in Qt 5.10. Okay, then we show things. So this, this is yeah, straightforward. With OpenGL, you probably have something similar if, if you are using the OpenGL window. Uh, this is the thing I mentioned earlier that the API model is modeled after a QQuick frame buffer object. So instead of the you know, initialized GL, resize GL, paint GL, well, there is a separate renderer class, uh, which you will subclass, and yeah, in the window you will re-implement create renderer. And uh, when it comes to the renderer, uh, yeah, this is not so complicated, you have the typical init, um, we, we do separate things like the swap chain, so the, the window size and because when I resize the window, of course the swap chain will get recreated, so that's why you have two init and release type of functions. And what matters to you mostly is the so-called start next frame, 
which is the equivalent of pain GL. But the catch here is that uh, we again try to be a bit more clever than we were in the past. And that's why it's, the name is, might look so weird at first, because this actually supports the more asynchronous type of operations. So when this function returns, that doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, you, everything is ready, you added everything you wanted to the main command buffer. Uh, you can actually choose to say that, no, maybe I'm launching threads, worker threads, doing stuff asynchronously, and my frame my, will be ready later. And that's why this thing is called start next frame. And then there's a function called frame ready, which you call back when it's actually, when, when everything is ready. Of course, you could choose to call that back right from here. So, which is then it's really more uh, similar to what you do, what you had with Spain GL in the GL world. Yes, when it comes to the actual implementation that we won't dive into because the rest is plain Vulkan stuff in here. So, shader stuff, texture stuff, and so on and so on. The good thing is that this does not need to take care of swap chain things, so overall the application, even though it does some relatively interesting drawing, so it uses textures, it actually has geometry, it does something, it's still relatively compact. Yes. So, yes, we have a number of examples shipping with Qt, so look into them. And now, to close this session, one thing is that uh, in the title, I talked about Vulcan and friends, so where are the friends? And the friends are obviously, you know, Metal and D3D12. So what I want to do here as a summary is we'll have a little bit of an overview of, you know, what are these, what are these different UI technologies in Qt? And so where do we use OpenGL? And, uh, you know, what is the current status when it comes to other graphics, API, uh, graphics APIs? And again, this is important since, like I mentioned in the beginning, it's a fact that we will probably have to handle multiple APIs in the future. So when Qt 5.0 came out, the story was simple. It was OpenGL and it was available pretty much everywhere. This is not true anymore, unfortunately, with the new APIs. So, yeah, that is why, you know, around Qt 5.8, we really start to look into this more actively. You know, Qt we got the experimental D3, D12 backend, and so on and so on. So, here is this scary looking list, which might not even be complete, which I like to show people. Because, uh, you know, this really shows that just talking about you know, say Vulcan supporting Qt, Metal supporting Qt, that's a bit problematic because there are so many things in there. And uh, right now, this is the status. So, for example, the Vulcan supporting 5.10, that basically covers the very first bullet point there. Of course, for Qt Quick, yeah, we had some D3D experiments. I know that for Qt 3D, there has been research and some work for, you know, supporting Vulcan. For Qt3D Studio, as you might have heard from Lars and from me yesterday, the problem of supporting other APIs is most likely solved by moving on top of Qt3D, which of course means that we don't need to maintain another 3D engine, which is good. But there are so many other things. So, for example, when we get asked, say, you know, what does it take to support, I don't know, Metal or whatever in, in, in Qt, then you know, what we have to do is to go through these things and really, you know, figure out that what does it mean? Is it really needed? Or maybe many of these things don't matter for many of the use cases, because if you care about Qt Quick, then you don't care about maybe the QPainter, QPainter's OpenGL backend. Whereas if you don't use Qt Quick, then maybe then you don't care about the Qt Quick scene graph. So, yeah, the fact is that Qt is quite huge today, and it has many things, OpenGL is everywhere. So to get full support for any of these new APIs will, you know, be a, a, a long road, a long journey and a long-term task. It's not impossible, so 
you know, someday uh, uh, we definitely get there, but you know, most people and projects will be you know happy just with a subset of this. So you know, if the technology you use you know supports the graphics API, you know, be it Quick Use 3D, whatever, then you you are fine. So you know, just something to keep in mind that you often you really don't need full Qt support for you know Vulkan Metal, whatever. It really depends on what your apps, what you are interested in, what your apps are using. And like I said, again, interop is something that can help here also in the future. So that's it. I don't know how much time we have left, but maybe some qu quick questions. So yeah, we can, we can have some. So don't hesitate to, to, to ask if you are wondering about something. What about Vulkan support on the Mac and iOS? Well, yes, so that's of course innovates a sad part of the story because, you know, Apple, you know, has Meta and uh, there are options. So for example, there is something called Molten VK, which is a library that presumably gives you the Vulkan API on top of, I assume, Meta. So there are options, but that's, of course, that's a third party solution. So there is no, you know, really first party option for Vulkan on macOS or iOS. And that's why we say that in a way, it's a bit unfortunate that in a way this can be seen as a step back from, from the OpenGL world, where of course OpenGL was available, you know, on those platforms too. And, you know, that's why we say that we have to be prepared for supporting, to supporting multiple APIs because, you know, yeah, for example, Metal on Apple platforms. Um, I have a question regarding to the last topic you were talking about, like finding like one API mm -hmm. somehow like for for all the platforms. The idea is, I don't really get it, but I can understand that it's like a polyfile for, maybe may, may you have to correct me because I, I was not really sure about what, what, what were you talking about. But it was like you were trying to look for kind of like a polyfill uh, solution for all the platforms using different APIs, just using one Qt code. Oh, so do you, you, you mean for the different graphics APIs or, or you mean this list? Sorry? So you mean the different graphics APIs to have a polyfill type of things, mm. which would then, you know, provide a solution. Uh, well, maybe, of course, how, how, how the support is done internally, that's, that's open. If, if, if uh, that's what you are wondering about. Any further questions? I don't see hands raised. Uh, why didn't you show pictures of volcanoes erupting? Eh. Well, I'm just kidding, I'm sorry. Because, yeah, it's not that, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Laszlo. Thanks.